Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I am here with an old friend, a comedian, delight, Wendy McClendon Covey. Still using your three names. I, Married 24 yeah. years yeah. to her best friend. My best everything. <laughs> I love that man. I love that man. I owe him everything. <laughs> Goldberg mom. <laughs> yeah. You guys are going to, the new episodes are airing, you said, uh, October 21st. Yes. What season are, is this? Season eight. Wow. Can you believe that? Most things don't go past seven. They don't. And, I mean, it. it is truly, and I've told you this when I've seen you at things stuff, my family loves that show. We watched it from the beginning. They say, oh. mom, don't be a Goldberg mom. There's so many funny Come things that, that your character has done, uh, Beverly, that has, like, you know, just resonated with everybody. Moms of that era, as you guys know, the show is from the 90s to today. Like, one of the fa my favorite thing is when you, like, didn't want them to become independent and learn how to cook. Yes. And I was like, oh, my God, I can relate to that because having boys, that's the one thing that it's kind of really satisfying, like feed those baby birds, you know, <laughs> even though they're like complete functioning adults. Right. That's the one thing that you can hold over them. Yeah. Is, no one's going to make this like mama. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I love that. Well, listen, the fact that you watch the show and think it's funny is everything to oh, me, Oh, gosh. It really thank is. You. No, thank you. Because even though we've known each other for a long time, and I'll t tell everyone how I met you. Yes. Was when you were doing Reno 911, such a hilarious show, so groundbreaking. Like, really, was that, was your show done before Curb Your Enthusiasm with that improv style? You know, I, I feel like they were right around the same time. Yeah. Ours might have been just a teeny bit before then. Right. But, um, but yeah, it, it there was a, a, time in the early 2000s when everyone was trying to do an improv show or an all improv movie like Christopher Guest. Oh, yes. And yes. so there was a lot of crap that came out around that right. time that was not funny at all. But yeah, so you were on Reno. Yes. And so what, so let's, so the casting director, what is her name? Julie. Julie Ashton. Julie Ashton, who's the only person that calls me in. Okay. The only <laughs> casting director who knows me, she, but she, God, she knows comedy. She yeah. discovers talent. She calls back talent. Right. If, if I'm going out for something, I know I'm going to see eight people I know in the waiting room. So I'm like, mm -hmm. at least if I don't get it, it'll be a fun afternoon. Exactly. I'm like, exactly. And, and almost like the, the waiting room of her casting office is so much fun that you're like, oh, it's my turn to go. You know what? I don't even fucking care if I don't yeah. even get who gives. And everyone's like cracking jokes as they're getting it. Like, well, I'll rip these up now, girls. I, you know, like um, you all can leave. Like everyone's just always like doing like a tight five after they walk out of there because everyone is so funny. Yeah. Oh, that's and so, so I went out. I remember to audition for that. It was like just come in with like a cop character or whatever. And they were... Because you came a little bit later. Or were you the last I person did. to be cast? I was. So I, I was. went in. You beat me out. Um, no, many I people know, I didn't in. know you auditioned for the Well, I would. I think oh, you would have this... probably said, I'm not going to bother to come in if you knew I was auditioning. I probably. <laughs> so yeah. I, just, I just created some character, but it was. I, felt, I didn't feel great about it, whatever. Okay. And then I saw her later, and she was like, okay, come in. We're doing, you know, just come in with the characters that would that would be on Reno 911 and they're going to be there. And it's like improvisational and everything. And she's like, and the woman we chose, I saw one night at the Groundlings. And she discovered you on the Groundlings. Yeah. And I've talked about the Groundlings a lot on the show. As you guys know, it's a sketch improv troupe. And Wendy was there probably just a couple years or right after me. Yeah. And so tell the story of how you were seen at that because that was really your first like real job that was right? my first real job and the um the weird thing was is that right go before I auditioned for that I thought I, I was go, seriously gonna, go gonna to just Reno. quit the business yeah okay wait right before yeah. that yeah now, where were you in the groundling school just Sunday show or are you main company yet? I was main company so okay. right after I got in the main company I still didn't, didn't you feel have like you a, made it? I felt really good about that. <laughs> it but is everyone, hard. It is super hard. It but is when super you leave hard. it is when you realize, wait a minute, 
there's only a hundred seats in this theater. Like when right. you're in it, it feels like the feels hub like of Hollywood. Yeah. And then when you leave it, you're like, it's really tiny. How did we not yeah. sell these hundred seats out? There are 18 people in Sunday show. <laughs> like if everyone just bought, th invited three people, it would have been right. full. Right. Yet there'd be nights where there'd be like 20 people there. Listen, and <laughs> sidebar, sidebar. Yeah. So you were in the su Sunday company. Yes. I was in the Sunday company, yes. company obviously. But um, how many times did you invite friends during yeah. your tenure in the Sunday company and they would say, well, when is it? Yes. I, uh, when is my show for the Sunday company? Is that a real question? How about Sunday? What time? Well, when do most comedy shows start? 11 a.m.? No. It's going to be like probably 7, 8 o'clock. Well, I, I did right, right before each voting thing, and you got every six months they'd vote. Yes. And it's a very weird place. I've talked a little bit about this before um, because I don't, I don't know if they fixed it since. But some people that are actually voting for you to come in, I believe their vote is compromised because they might be a little threatened by you. If they're mm -hmm. in the main company and this is their main gig yes. and everybody goes, did you see, you know, uh, did you, Wendy, do you see Jennifer? She reminds me of a young you. She reminds you of like stuff like that. Right. And then you're like. Does this person really want this person in? Now, if they're on Friends, they're probably fine with a young you coming in. Right. But, like, it was weird. Uh -huh. Unlike these other theater groups where they, like Second City, where you could actually get a job and go on a cruise ship for a year and, like, do these, like, classic sketches. And so it was kind of a strange place like that. Yeah. And for, the, you, for the company members to be yes. voting on who gets to move up. Not appropriate. Yeah. It should have been, yeah. like, a senior council. It should have been, like, the Supreme Court or something, whatever. Absolutely. Yeah, the Supreme Court of Comedy should have been okay. deciding. Well, now we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> But, now we're talking. That would have been more fair. You know, would have been more fair. And then, and a like, lot of people don't want to lose their spots. So and they stay for far too long. And, and just like the Supreme problem. Court, speaking of which, and this is not a political show, yeah. they can never kick you out. You have to step down, and there's only 30 spots. Exactly. So there, there, were, there are people, there would be people on buses, on, meaning like their show is on a bus. Uh -huh. They, and they were still like, I don't know if I want to give out that spot. What if I lose it all and I still want to perform it Friday night? Right. And it was just like that part was so weird. And I can't believe right. it's still it's still run like that. Right. Yes. I think I think, though, that there have been a lot of positive changes. Oh, I that's have to good. say. Like, yeah. In the years after I left. Right. Finally, the the bottleneck of so many problems there was yeah. kind of flushed out. And, and things are moving again. Yeah, okay? that's good. But I did always find it weird that you could just hang on to your spot for years and years and years. And what is the end game of that? Again, like you said, it's only 100 seats. Yeah. So who are you performing <laughs> for? Like, do you want to... Do you want to be a big fish in a small pond? I, mean, I just remember us, you know, and the majority of the people at a Sunday group age is 20s, early 30s. Right. And so we're all dying to get in the main company. And I remember just looking at those photos, and there was people that had some very old headshots that were, like, 50 <laughs> years old. And I'm like, you're 50. Like, come on. Like yeah. you can, And you, the thing is, you can still get up your spot and teach, which is exactly. lucrative. So it, not that lucrative. But I'm saying it still right. makes sense in between television shows. You, like, take on a class, and people enjoy it or whatever. But wait, I want to tell you two things about yeah, when yeah. you talked about the, the conversation. So sometimes before the, the voting happened, you'd have a fun night in the Sunday show, and people would do, like, joke sketches. And yes. I actually wrote a little sketch of the exact conversation you're talking about of inviting people. And so it was like, um, you're going to you're going to be you okay. and I'm going to be the friend. OK. okay? Oh, my God. I I heard that you are killing it at the Groundlings. We have to go sometime. Yeah, I would love to have you. Let me know when you want to come. I'll give you calls. When is it? Um, well, I'm in the Sunday company, uh -huh. so uh, every week on Sundays. Oh, my God. Sunday well, night. you let me know because we will be there front and center. You know, I can't stress it enough. I've been um, I've been in the Sunday company for yeah. over a year. So, like, every Sunday for we, a year. We, like, I will get a group. Okay. We love comedy. So just let me, like, let me know okay. when it is. 
and like I'll see if I can go. But like we are down. Okay. Do you want to come this Sunday? Um, I don't know if I can do this Sunday, but let okay. me know the next time you're on. Okay. Because it's literally every Sunday. <laughs> that is exactly <laughs> what it would be yeah. like. And it was so, and you're just like, fuck it, like, hey. You don't want to come and see me. Yeah. Just, let's just end this conversation. <laughs> yeah. And there were, and there were friends of mine, former friends. Oh, who I'm never, glad you cut them out of your life. never once came to see me. Never once. My friends so did like, come. My friends and well, my, my friends and my parents they loved coming. Yes. And when I, finally after two years, there was eight of us up for one spot. Oh, no, no, no. So seven of us got the call of, hey, pretty lady. Yeah. So anyway, it was fine. But after that, when I had to break it to my parents, I said, okay, so, you know, this chapter of my life is ending. And my dad's like, hmm. Well, it was kind of our social life. I remember him oh. saying that. It was kind of our social life. He loved it. He would knew everybody's name. The Monday after, because I worked in real estate with him, yeah. I, he would go, all right, let's, and he'd take out the little um, thing, and he'd go down the sketches, and he'd say, who I like, who I love. You know I'm a fan of, you know, Mike, but this wasn't his best. And then he'd, like, and talk to every single person oh. when they came out. And so everyone, like, and I had, because I was from L.A., I did yeah. have a lot of friends that would come uh -huh. and, like, knew the people. So I was lucky in that. It would be more like those other people that, you know, when you're, like, but hilarious. And then I right. always remember having to go to, like, a main show towards, as we were getting towards the voting time, I was like, ah, oh, fuck. It's Saturday night. I better go to a main show and kick some, kiss some kiss ass some at ass. that bar after. Mm -hmm. So now. <laughs> the snake pit. Was it the snake pit that the you snake, went to? Well, first it would be outside. And then okay. we would go to the snake pit. Yes. Which, um, which I just told you about the snake pit the other day about my Vince Vaughn story. When Vince Vaughn came to see me in the Sunday show. What? Yes. But first, before I get to okay, Vince Vaughn, yeah, I yeah, want to yeah. now do another improv with yes. you. Of you are the main company member and okay. I'm trying to get your vote. Okay. Wendy. Oh, my God. I am I am still laughing. I just got an ab workout. <laughs> that bit... <laughs> That bit about you being the Long Island grandmother getting oh. her nails done. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Um, like, how you did know, you, who is that character? How did you think of that? That whole accent? What made you think to do a New York accent? You know, I, um, <laughs> I just, it was the last night of showing scenes and I just sort of threw it at the wall because really? I literally didn't think I was going to get to be in this show. Like nothing was working. You're kidding. Yeah. And you, you were know, like, it's funny. You were I'm, the I'm so glad you said that because I sometimes feel like I'm not hearing enough laughter. That's no, my God. You, really? okay. I was in the back. Okay. We were dying. I think it was like a woman thing. Oh. And I don't think there was many women in the audience because you know what? the women were dying laughing. You're so smart because um, the eight o'clock audience is always different than the ten o'clock. Totally. And the eight o'clock audience this time, they were just assholes. Like they just didn't get it. They totally did not get okay. it. No, and your choice of earrings that they were little pandas. Thank you. Like you nobody costumes Thank you guys you. does nobody costumes like Wendy. You know nobody. What? Can I can I just say something right now? Yeah. I like the way that you don't break on stage anymore. And I like oh. the way that when you um, jump in to an improv set, yeah. you like already know what you're going to say. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. 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 Good job. Good job. Because um, I'm up Are you for... having fun? I am. I mean, I'm up. I'm yeah. up. It's 18 months. Yeah. Uh, next oh, Sunday wow. is our Time 18 flies. month thing. So then I guess yeah. that Monday you guys will... Like be voting on who's staying yeah. or who's moving on. Oh, I hate doing that. It's so painful. But you know, you just have to really be process oriented. <laughs> like you just have to really think about the yeah. process and all the stuff you're learning here. Well, I haven't think about the process. That's why I think yeah. like after 18 months, like I'm excited to go to the next level. We'll see. We'll see. You know, it it might it might go your way. It might not. But you have to be okay with it. Just know that you are super talented. And Lisa Kudrow had to repeat intermediate four times. Did you know that? I didn't hear four. She oh. was my teacher. And mm. I love her. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't know that it was four. Yeah. Is that is that like an urban 
Growling's myth? Or I mean, four times. A myth? I don't know. No, I mean, everybody's saying it. How can it not be true? I I do not think it was. I don't think they even let people back. I think they like to tell you that you can't come back. They feel bad for you if you don't. Well, listen. All I know is I auditioned for Friends, and you know it's all a popularity contest at NBC. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. What part? Anyway. What part did you audition for? Um. The um the sister. Oh. Oh, you mean you did like a guest role of when the sister came no, to visit? The uh, one, that the one with got? that uh, toothy woman. Oh. Courtney. Oh, What's you would have been so much yeah. funnier than her. Um, thank you. But <laughs> they already had a blonde. That's probably Mary, why. Yeah. <laughs> you look too much like Lisa Kudrow with your long blonde hair. I say that. Well, no, I mean, you're prettier, a prettier version. I know, right? Totally prettier. Like a younger, prettier more California version than she is, even though she's from California. Let me just say this. What? The night before the voting. Yeah. Do the song improv. Okay. Oh, that's Get. my hardest one, though. Doesn't I'm not matter. good at that. I'm Doesn't not like matter. a Jim Weiss. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Just do it. Be confident about it. And don't shit your pants. People will remember that you were confident and you took on that challenge. Oh. Because I've never, ever done the song improv in, like, this entire time. And you think that should be the first time I, mean, I do it? Right? When all the voting throw people it all are at there? The, throw it all at the wall. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Eight people, one spot. Yeah. Take risks. Okay. Sometimes I just feel Can like... Can I have one of your nachos? Oh, totally. I actually bought them for you. Oh, thanks. Um, actually, sometimes I just feel like people just... I don't know. They don't... They do, like, oh... That sorority girl from SC, I don't think they really think that I'm, like, a true, like, hard edge, like, alternative hip comic, you know? Well, then they didn't see your um, funky grandma sketch. Yeah, that only... Where you... It only lasted one week for some weird reason. Again, it was a weird night. I think it it lasted a month. No, it was... um, It was was, a one and done. It was a big fight out, like, a big, like, Vegas fight. So we had really a bad showing that night. Oh. Or maybe it was a Laker thing. We lose a lot of audience to like big sporting events. <laughs> <laughs> and Those other lies true. we tell ourselves. Oh my God, yeah, that is so, so funny. funny. And then the thing about it is um, with Fortune, uh, Fortune's on the show all the time too, and uh-huh. she was just under me. And so she was waiting to get the call to see if she'd be main company. Right. And she was in my office at Chelsea lately. And so then she, they didn't graduate her. So then, from across the room, I called her on her work phone and did an old-fashioned 90s groundlings um, sad, you're, you're going to be okay in this town call, which was, oh. and so then we continued that throughout our careers when yeah. our pilots don't get picked up. Then Fortune will call me, and or I'll call Fortune and be like, hey, pretty lady. Oh, oh God. God, I just got the news. Um, you know what you, uh, and then we go through the whole thing, gift. all those yeah. same type of things Sugar and don't cut. be a stranger. And, oh my God, it is a good, it is good times. And I have to say, yes. I had a great time at the ground. Of course. Okay. Absolutely had a great time. Learned so much. Just the most stressful time of your life. It's the most <laughs> stressful time of your life. And. But I still have friends from there. Of course. I yeah. loved, you know, there were so many things to love about it. And totally. the good outweighed the bad. But there were some some weird things that, like that. that happened. Like those you know, weird the, things. Like the the voting yeah. was very strange. And, you know, yeah. There, but any anything like that is going to be a little but bit the edu- political. But the education of the character development yeah. and all that stuff. I know there's other places. Yeah. I think this, I think Growlings is unique to that, to the yes. writing and the, and so anyway with, so then you got the part. So what, how did they come, how did she come see you and okay. get it? Okay. So what happened was I got in the main company. Yeah. And the night that I got the call, I had, <laughs> this was weird. I had been on an audition for Girls Behaving Badly. Oh Yeah. The all-girl sketch group. Chelsea yeah. was on that. Chelsea the hidden was on camera. It. it was funny. It was funny. Yeah. And um, but 
I guess it wasn't going well or whatever. And the casting director was like, so you want to be an actress? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So this was just one in a long line of, you know, disappointments. I still didn't have an agent. possible signs from God. Possible signs (laughs) from God. And I was like, okay, Still didn't have an agent, which is the heart was the hardest thing to ever do. Yeah. 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 And you're like, wait a minute, this person has an agent and they're not even funny. I'm hysterical. Why Why can't this agent yeah. sign me? In retrospect, I wasn't meant to go through that yeah. mind fuck with that agent. Yeah. But, you know, there was just a lot. At, and at the ripe old age of 32, I was like, yeah. well, maybe I'm just washed up. Maybe, right. maybe this is never going to happen for me. So I just... Let it all go, I said. And at that time, at 32, you are married. I am married. And you lived in Long Beach, right? Still live in Long Beach. And um, my daughter is actually a senior at Cal State Long Beach no in the way. film school. Yes. Oh, my God. And I always thought when I when I heard that, I'm like, it wasn't that far for you to go t- and do all this Hollywood stuff? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm I'm so used to it. I mean, any place you got to go yeah. in L.A. It's true. Takes Everything's forever. an hour. Yeah. So I just think of it as my decompression time. Yeah. And I don't mind it. Okay. I don't yeah. mind it. Well, people would say the same thing to me about Woodland Hills. And yeah. I'm, I'm just so used to knowing that no matter where I'm going, I leave an hour. I mean, now with Corona, it's not as much traffic, but it's coming back. Right. So you just leave an hour and I'm never late. I'm the person that's never late because you do live far. Yeah. 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 So anyway, and, continue. And again, so. once, once you get out here, you're not surrounded by everybody trying to do the same thing right. necessarily. And that's why I've always stayed yeah. where I grew up. For better or worse. But anyway, so I just sort of said to myself, well, I'm going to keep doing the Groundlings because I got in and I love it. And I'm always going to do that. Maybe I'll never make any money in right. this business. But this is part of my life now. And I'm going to, I am i don't know. Yeah. Something will reveal itself. So then I got asked to substitute for Cheryl Hines. Yeah. In um, the Beverly Winwood Showcase. Right. So the Beverly Winwood Showcase, for your listeners at home, is a fake showcase for actors based on all the showcases around Los Angeles. In those acting classes that you would pay. You'd pay about $75 to do a scene and they say and then it was a complete racket mm-hmm. between the casting agents and the the school that would put it on. Right. And right. they'd be like, I think you're crazy not to sign up for Tuesday's thing. It's a lot of sitcom um, casting directors. I never got anything from that. I never so, did either. So they yeah. did a, a like a, a parody of, of what that would really be like. Exactly. A bad showcase that 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 desperate actors are paying to be on. Exactly. Complete with yeah. a packet of fake resumes oh, yes. that were hysterical. Yeah. And so Cheryl Hines and Mary Jo Smith were doing a scene from The Color Purple. Okay. okay. <laughs> so two white women doing a scene from The Color Purple. And Cheryl couldn't do it for some reason, so I came in to, to fill in. Yeah. That was the night that Julie Ashton's um, assistant was in the audience. Yeah. And we did this we did this in Beverly Hills. It wasn't at the Groundlings. It was okay. at a nice theater in Beverly Hills. That is what turned everything around. So then they called me in. Oh, do you want to come in and um, audition for this improv show? Yeah. It's about the cops. It's based on cops. Just come in with a cop character. That's all we can tell you. Just, yeah. you know, come in and be ready to improvise. So I went in and... Julie Ashton's office at the time, right. you could hear everything that was going on. Always. Which also Always. sometimes helps because then I would hear what people were doing. Or if I didn't have the lines memorized, yeah. I could, like, learn the lines by hearing them be told exactly. the whole time. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm listening to what's going on and I'm thinking, well, listen, I, I'm, I may not be a sexy cop, yeah. but I can be funny yeah. and act like I'm sexy. That's what I'll do. Yeah. So um, it seemed to have worked out. Yeah. You know, I got the call back and then I we filmed the pilot and then it got picked up and it was like, oh, wow. Oh, well, I guess, you know, if you hit your head against the wall long enough, you'll knock a brick out. Yeah. And then it all comes a tumbling down. So, so then you so then then an agent wanted you when you're already employed. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. When you're already employed. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was. You know, I'm I'm forever grateful to that opportunity. And then we've 
I don't know if you know about Quibi and all that yeah, stuff, yeah. but we are on Quibi. So, so the you, new episodes are being... So when did you shoot new episodes of it? Uh, let's see. This was right before the shutdown. So it was like February. And so you just did like a... How long was your shoot? You just jammed it in? or I what? think they did 20 days and I was able to give them four. And and that didn't conflict with your Goldberg. There contract. was over there okay. was overlap, but it didn't conflict with the contract because okay. this is a Previously. this is an app. Oh, you know what I mean? interesting. So it's, it's not television. Oh, so there's it's a very gray area where like a precedent has not been set. Right, I'm sure they're trying to figure out it. some way to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it it worked out, and um and we're going back to work in a couple weeks on season eight. So of of Goldberg's or oh, no of this. this yeah oh, that's great so I will and be doing double so duty again. and is it everybody uh, did everyone come back everybody came back including Mary Birdsong who's not pictured here and then the two officers that came in for season six uh-huh. when they killed off me and Carlos and Mary okay but we're they're just acting like that never happened oh, okay that's good. <laughs> And so it's a giggle. It's fun. And was it so fun to all get back together? It was weird. I got to tell you, I thought, I don't remember how to play this person. Oh, really? Um, did you watch old remember. episodes to get in the mood? I did not. Well, um, that might have been a wise choice. But then it it, it kind of came back a little bit. But yeah, it is, it is weird to um, wear this unflattering outfit again. But again... It was fun. It was I fun. If nothing so, else happened. So they call they called me back. Yes. And they're like, okay, you know, they're looking for characters and stuff to be like a guest on it. Right. So just come in with someone that would be on Reno 911 Cops. Now right. maybe it was already one season in or something. I was just familiar with what it was. So I um I basically just did this like I basically did my sister being like pissed off about a fucking day, yeah. you know, bitching to some cop. And I do this whole long story and they're like, okay, so funny. So then they call me back and they say, you're going to be Clementine's, Deputy Clementine's best friend, maid of honor. She's getting married. Yes. And so we went and we went out to like Sun Valley. And I just remember that was the first time I met you. Uh-huh. And I thought it was so genius that as your character, they did the makeup the the heavy base that uh-huh. just stops at the jawline, right? And the and the um, <laughs> the joint trail. So like, <laughs> oh, I didn't when you know. smoke a joint that like it takes off part of your lipstick. Oh I don't my think God. anyone ever. I never up caught on that. that. Yeah. I just remember yeah. catching this part. I yeah. thought it was so funny. I thought it was amazing that Nisi had like an added mm-hmm. padding in her butt. Yeah. Um, and it was and so. It was so funny. So we did a couple scenes. Let me see. Wait, hold on. I think oh, it's yeah. Here. No, you Wait. were so funny. And here it is. Just for the These hell of it, bits. you and I kept improvising all yeah. day long because I wanted to know more about this character. So I created a character <laughs> that I was your friend. And I mean, I'm, I have better photos that she's going to throw up when we print this up. But I mean, they did the <laughs> worst hairdo the hair. ever. Yes. Like that crunchy, just so awful. And, yes. um, and so this was definitely an improvised thing, but they're like, you know, think about what you want to do as a toast at the bachelorette. This was beautiful. And Tell I do, I'm going to do it. I kind of mm-hmm. remember it. So mm-hmm. we'll just reenact it. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your first name? Clemmy. Clemmy. Okay, yeah, Clemmy. Yeah. I didn't know if that was the last name. I can't remember. Um, Clemmy, I have been there from the beginning for you. I have been through the multiple guys in one night. I have been there when you have puked. I have been there when you didn't have a tampon. I don't know what I said. I said things like that. But I just get to the part yeah, and I yeah. go, um, and I'm going to be there no matter what this marriage brings you. Mm-hmm. And if you find that you cannot get pregnant, I want you to know, I want everyone here to know that I will have sex with your husband for as many times as it takes and I will carry that baby and give it to you. <laughs> You're a good friend. The best friend. 
And I just remember the way they shot it. Like everyone's like thinking it's a nice toast. And then yeah. it's like, everyone's like, oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, this is the funnest thing thing I've ever done because oh the God. improvising and then we, they would do it like twice and then we'd and move then that, on yeah. and I'm like this is so genius so then when we did after lately on Chelsea lately I love I loved that format uh -huh. I would love to be on a show like that again I think it is so much fun yeah and is it similar now when you guys are redoing it is it the same type of format of improvisation and everything yeah. of you know, do it a couple of times and then we're moving on because, yeah. you know, they don't shoot it from every angle. Thank God. It's not supposed to look good. Right. You know, um, they did do. I don't know if you know much about Quibi, but they have a thing where if you turn your phone one way, you right. get this view. And if you turn it. Another oh, yeah. Way, yeah. You get a different view. So that requires different cameras. Yeah. A different camera setup. But. I don't know that people are taking advantage of that. And it hasn't added that much time onto the process. Yeah. But I will say this. You're, you're crying as I walked through the park. Oh, then, then I cry a lot yeah. because you're going to get married and I'm so emotionally invested in this. Yeah. Your crying was one of my favorite things. And if anyone wants to see this, it's on season one of <laughs> Reno called Clemmy Gets Married. And Heather is a genius in it. And do oh. you remember we went to that awful park? Yes. And the whole every place we shot pl was, was gross. horrible. Yeah. 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 Like, are we still in California? Yeah. But it was a really gross park inside a trailer park. Oh. And there were like used condoms. Oh all yes. Over. And this is like, this is where children play. This is yeah. disgusting. <laughs> like needles and condoms and Oh, yeah. Not a glamour shoot. No. But very fun. And so then, so you did that for a few years. And mm -hmm. then when did Bridesmaids come about? Because that just changed, that changed female comedy movies, I think. So for the better. Like, we had yeah. never seen anything like that. And well, I Let's see. That, okay, so the first table read we had for Bridesmaids was in 2007. Now, how did you get the part? Because so many of you knew each yeah. other and worked together. You, Maya Rudolph, uh -huh. and Kristen Wiig, right? Yeah. And um, Melissa, Melissa McCarthy. Yeah. You were all from the Groundlings. Yes, and we all met at a bridal shower. Really? Isn't that crazy? Who's? Um, Rachel Ramras. Oh, okay. Do you remember Rachel? I remember from Rachel Harris. No, no, it's a no, different Rachel. Different okay, girl. yeah. So, you, so that's where you all so met. That's where we all met. I had never met Kristen. She uh -huh. was like a little behind me in the school. Uh -huh. Maya was already on SNL. Um, Melissa was in the main company, and it was at Melissa's apartment. Melissa was on Gilmore Girls, and she had this gorgeous apartment, really kitschy and fun. And we went there for. A bridal shower, and I was like, oh, my God, there's Maya Rudolph sitting right there. Oh, my God, this is so weird. Um, and, like, Kristen and I were broke. Yeah. So and Kristen, I don't wait, say, Kristen wasn't on SNL yet. No. Okay. She was in the Sunday. No, she wasn't even in the Sunday company. I think she was in advanced. She was trying to get voted in. Yeah. She was going yeah. Saturday nights to kiss some ass. Exactly. And that's definitely <laughs> what I was doing. But um, so... Annie Mumolo, uh -huh. who was also right behind me in the school, she and Kristen wrote this, this movie. First table read was in 2007. So by that time, I had also done Love Spring International. I don't know if you... No, I don't remember It was that. another all improv show, but it only okay. lasted one season. Okay. Um, but anyway, we did... You know, a table so read it, with Judd what, Apatow. Was it, like, written for you? Or once they put it together, no, they... No. But did they go right to you? Or did they, like, audition people? They auditioned people. Oh, okay. So, okay, so the first table reads in 2007. Then it just kind of sat around for a while. And then 2010 came up. And they said, oh, you know, the, it's back in play. And we're going to have auditions. Okay, uh -huh. great. My, when you did the table read in 2007, uh -huh. did you think it was as hysterical as, as it was? It was a be? lot different. Oh, okay. It was a lot different, but it was fun. Yeah. Was like, oh, good for them. They wrote a screenplay. <laughs> well, in in the meantime, Annie Mumolo, the, the co-writer, yeah. she had had one child yeah. and was pregnant with number two. 
and was going to be playing Melissa, the role that eventually went to Melissa McCarthy. Okay. But she was just too pregnant and it yeah. was like not good. So she is the girl on the plane that Kristen says, I'm freaked right. out about flying. And Annie goes, oh, I had a dream. The plane went down. You were in it. Right. Um. So, yeah, that's Annie. Um. Okay, so that's so. I'm just thinking of how funny that was on the plane where she's like, "I what, what, what does she say when she's like, um, uh, hello? <laughs> like, yeah, that I'm like, ready to party. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, go on. Yeah, so we, I did audition for it, uh-huh. and that my first audition was on a Saturday, and my grandpa had died that week, and I was like, not in the mood to be funny. Mm. But I thought, that's awfully nice of them that they called me in. I'm going to go. I went in. I did my thing. And okay, whatever. I don't expect to hear anything. But I did. And then I went to a callback. And there's all these actresses. Like like real actresses. (laughs) Famous. Yeah, like way more famous than me. I was like, well, that's just nice that they let me come back. Right. That's Come on, what what stand up ladies these are that they yeah. brought me back? So I went in, I just threw it away, and okay, went home, got called back again. There's even more people in the waiting room, and I'm like, what the fuck? This is just solid. These girls are solid. They keep bringing me back in. <laughs> wow, so nice. But I never thought I would. Get it. And we improved. We did right. all kinds of things because, you know, they were kind of like, we've got all these bridesmaids, but we don't really know how to differentiate any of them. The script went through so many. Oh, okay. So then I get a call. Annie and Kristen are on the phone and they're like, Wendy, you know what? We just want to say thank you for auditioning. It was really nice. And um, we... You really just gave everything, and you were so funny. So I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but we want you to do it. Oh, that is great. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. So the whole time you're oh thinking God, this like, is the letdown. Yeah, this is it. See, they, yeah. knew, they, knew, they knew how to fuck then, with you just like we learned the groundlings exactly. of just the big letdown. Exactly. Now, had you then create because I loved your story which right. was you were miserable married with four boys which mm-hmm. was so relatable to me and I thought it was so funny like those parts where they where they're planning the the lake house bachelorette right. and you're like I want to you know I want some fun I've had a tube top that's been waiting to be yeah. worn like now is all that, that improv from you or was that like with the four boys yeah. and all that, was that given to you or? No, we got to create a, we had work sessions where we would just like improvise and they would film all of it. And then. Amazing. You know, so a lot of, I, I based my thing on the Real Housewives. Okay. Uh-huh. Where <laughs> everything is completely comfortable uh-huh. for this woman. But why does she have this malaise? Yeah. Okay. What? Nothing's really wrong. You see her in a scene where she's like, I'm surrounded by savages. The kids are quietly playing. Yeah. You know, nothing is wrong with this bitch. But <laughs> except maybe she needs to get a job. Right. Yeah. You know, and she's like, I want balls in my face. I want balls in my face. But what would happen if she got balls in her face? She'd probably yeah. start crying. Yeah. You know? Like, I, don't, I do remember the, the, the how rude the crunchy the the crunchy cum socks or whatever yes. you said that description was hilarious about your boys laundry and like the, yeah. the hell you are living in now that was told to me by a woman I worked with <laughs> a long time ago who said told me this awful story about how her mother-in-law used to have to beat her husband's underpants against the fence <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So that well, I'll, I'll use that at some point for something. And you something. did. And, and did. you did. And it yeah. was that memorable. So, yes. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah. So that it was really fun. It's hard to believe that was 10 years ago now. And so when but, you guys did it and you're filming it, obviously you're having a great time. Yeah. It's a great shoot. I know it's always like I always joke about, too, when you get like the Oscar winners, like, I can't believe it. It's just this little funny show that we did. Right. You know, I mean, what when you finished it or even when you went to the premiere, um, 
Like, were you super excited? Did you realize how funny it was? Or did you think it's funny, but everything I do is like a little culty and it's not going to be the big hit? Yes. That's yeah. exactly what I thought. I just yeah. thought I got to be in a movie with my friends and it, now it'll just do what it does. Yeah. You know, but at that point, my I had this terrible manager at the time who actively tried to dissuade me from doing this. Really? He didn't find it funny. I can't. It's shocking that a man that a man in doesn't Hollywood understand how wouldn't women wouldn't understand work. why an all female cast yeah. and writers just it's not going to work exactly. Or I don't how, get like, it. Working and earning money is better than not working and not earning money. <laughs> so weird. So what would he yeah. say? He was just like, I, you know, I don't know why you want to do this. I don't know why you want to do this. You should hold out for something better. And it's like, well, that kind of rests on your shoulders, doesn't it? <laughs> like, have you brought me what, anything what better? What have you brought me yeah. in three years? You know, so when this finally did, when it did take off and we were all shocked. Yeah. I said to him, I said, um, so what's on, on deck for now me? That, now that I have this huge hit. Yeah. yeah. Do you have, uh, do I have any meetings, anything? And he says, um, no, but I'm really optimistic. <laughs> so I wrote my letter and I said, I think our time together is over. Oh. <sighs> Isn't it the great? It's, yeah. it's also nerve wracking, but it's also great firing yeah, uh, representation. I, exactly. Like, I'm not going to tithe to you anymore. Right. You've done absolutely nothing for me. So let's let's just clean house here. We don't work together anymore. And you don't contact me again. And I will be in free fall for a while until I find somebody. You know, because that did. Me, and what was his response? Nothing. I've never heard from him again. Isn't that also weird? Yeah. That when I've I've broken up with managers and sent like emails or there was even a time like I faxed a letter because yeah. it was like email wasn't even around and um, never heard boo. And I'm like, now yeah. I've been, I was a realtor for many years. And when you lost a listing, you'd say like maybe you had it for six months. You couldn't sell it. And they're like, hey, we're going to try to go with Colvin Baker and stuff. You'd be like, well, I am so sorry. I worked so hard. If it doesn't work out, yeah, I, I hope that you come back to me. I, you know, and and you still and you'd say I'm still going to bring buyers to your house. I still think it's a great house. In Hollywood, they're just like, well, fuck you. Well, what yeah. what about saying, you know what? If you're not happy, you could always call. And I I I will say I've had like one agent out of like twelve uh -huh. actually be that classy, right? But the right. rest, <laughs> like... no, this was fine. Like, yeah, we. You have had so much time to do something for me. Right. And a lot of times agents and managers, and you can probably attest to this, they'll snatch you up just so no one else gets yes. you. But they don't know what to do with you. Exactly. You know? So I felt like that's what this was. Uh-huh. And I also feel that he had a terrible drug problem. Oh, that's fun. Because he Tell would me. call me <laughs> at weird times of the night and just ramble, 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 oh, ramble. Oh, I had an agent with a drug problem too. Yeah. Yes. And we he set up a meeting for me. I'll tell you off camera, maybe. Um, no, just tell me. No, we don't know who it is. The manager. Well, you just, know who the person that the meeting was with. I don't. I don't want to. Okay, save it but for anyway, after. Um, it was the most uncomfortable meeting I've ever had, and my manager kept running to the bathroom. So. Either he's got IBS. Yeah, or Coke. Or a Coke problem. And the little foamy white bits. Oh, at the, the dry mouth. At the side of his that, mouth. I, tell oh me God. everything I need to know. That dry, oh, oh. my God, the, dry, the corners of dry mouth oh. is the grossest thing. Whenever I see it, I'm like, oh. Yeah, like, oh, you and your Coke mouth. Oh. oh. Your Coke mouth and your Coke nose and your ambient fueled rants in the middle of the night. But anyway, so... That happened. That was really fun. Love all those ladies. And as happens so many times when you get close to people during a movie, I've never seen them again. <laughs> what? <No. laughs> I mean, honestly, I haven't. I've run into Ellie a couple of times. Yes. I don't see Melissa. Again, I live far away. So Yeah. Like, there's just may not be a reason. Yeah, there's just. I did do. Um, a thing with Kristen and Annie. They have a new movie that was supposed to come out 
in July, and it's been pushed a whole year. Oh, okay. But you already filmed it? We already filmed it. That's called Barb and Star Go to Vista Del Mar. Okay. Um, What's it about? It's nuts. Okay. And I, I was choke laughing on the plane. Fortune's in it. Oh, okay, great. Um, but it has to do with these two Midwestern gals in their 40s. Are you one of them? Well, I'm I'm the catalyst for them going to Vista Del Mar. Okay, okay. I've only got one scene. And is Vista Del Mar, it doesn't even exist. It doesn't what exist. Is, what is it supposed to be, like Inland OC? Um, it's supposed to be just like a really fun place for singles to get together. Oh, okay. And, you know, um, like a club med or a oh, sandals. Got it. But okay. in Florida. Got it, got it. So they lose their job at Jennifer Convertibles. Uh-huh. And they are devastated because that is their whole life. Hilarious. Okay. So right after getting fired, they run into my character power walking through the town square. Uh-huh. And they're like, you look great. Did you just come back from vacation? Yes, I've been to Vista Del Mar. Uh-huh. And I've had a soul douche. <laughs> so that'll be the, the phrase that comes out of this movie. Yeah. So anyway, they go on and have these wacky adventures. Wait, can you turn Vista a little Del- more here? Sorry. Like, yes. In Vista Del yeah. Mar. Fortunes in Hilarious. The, in Hilarious. The movie. Love um, it. Jamie Dornan plays um, a very strange uh, villain. Yeah. But it's it's funny. Like, you've never seen oh, I, okay. Jamie Dornan. Did Dorn they ever Dornan. talk about doing a sequel to this? I feel like they, they there was talk of that and what happened there. They did. Um, Kristen didn't want to. Mm-hmm. And I get it. Like, this, again, first table read, 2007, that's four years of their life. Yes. That was like nonstop bridesmaids. They don't want to do it anymore. And right. I totally get it. I totally get yeah. it. Yeah. Um, it was a no-brainer that, you know, we should do it, but... Yeah. You know, I think look. it... I mean, I'm sure they talked about all the scenarios, but just seeing all the same characters come for, you know, someone else's, you know, like probably her having a baby, yeah. right? And yeah. then, but where, you know, but now that Kristen kind of had her shit together, what would be her story? Exactly. But everybody else's story could just have evolved and been fun and stayed the Absolutely. same. Absolutely, yeah. And um, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah, I can see that, you mm-hmm. know? And it's the same thing when people talk about, I, I worked on white chicks and yeah. people always want white chicks, white chicks, white chicks. And all I know is that Sean and Marlon had to be in those makeup chairs yeah. in Canada. I don't even know if, like, SAG rules, maybe it was legal because they were producers, but they literally oh, got, really? like, three hours of sleep a night because we'd film till, like, a midnight, oh, and no. then at, like, their call time would to start getting in the makeup would be, like, 2.33 a.m. Oh, I don't know. It, it must yeah. have been the most exhausting thing. So, but every time it comes up, I'm like, oh, my God, I, I know what I would like to pitch about the storyline or whatever. Yeah. But then with that, with, you know, LGBTQ and, and trans right. people, I was like, oh, now maybe this doesn't work anymore. But right. now, but then it became popular. Like, it just, it's like all these young kids love it and they don't care. Isn't that funny? Like, yeah. because of streaming, things take yes. on a whole different life. Yeah. yeah. And so now my kids are like, oh, yeah, my, you know, they know that because I had a part in it, a small part in it. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, they, they're freaking out that you were in this and that you were in Drake and Josh. Like these <gasps> like old things that they're like oh, finding. Wow. And I'm like, oh, OK, well, great. I'm glad someone's excited about it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> now when so what, now when uh-huh. like you look so different in all these parts, you don't look like yourself. Uh-huh. You don't look like Beverly. Yeah. You don't look like the Reno 911 girl. You did look like this character because mm-hmm. she was just like pretty and normal. Oh, but um, <laughs> but was like recognizing going out, did people recognize you? Was that like a thing to adjust in your life? Yeah, that that was a little weird. That was a little weird and uh-huh. continues to be weird. Um, and most of the time... I think it's my voice that gives me away yeah. more than anything. Yeah. And I don't like I don't mind whoever wants to come up. I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah. But I'm sure as you know as well, there's there's some people that um assume a familiarity with you right. that is not there. Yeah. Okay. 
But because they listen to you all the time, they feel like they know you right. and they want to weigh in and they want to unload on you a little bit. Yeah. And they want to like, hey, bitch, like, yeah. oh, we're buddies. <laughs> and it's like, no, we're not. Please keep your distance. Like, right. Just back up a little bit. I don't know you. I don't know what's, you know, yeah, what's yeah. going on. You're, you've interrupted my dinner. <laughs> Was it different with your husband since you guys have been together so long? And I remember when I met you at on Reno 911, you guys still had like a graphic design business or something or a grass store. Yes. What did you yeah. have? Um, that was, yeah. So we had like a printing broker brokerage uh -huh. and we don't have that anymore. Um, but yeah, at the time that we met, my husband yeah. was probably working two jobs. Yeah. And I was also working at Cal State Long Beach in the social work department. Wow. So, like, that's a job I kept all the way through Bridesmaids, by the way. Why? I like doing it. And, <laughs> and you just and you never thought, know what's going to happen. This shit's not going to last. You, yeah. just, you just don't know. I mean, right. that's, that's an actor's life. Like, right. you, you, you know, make a movie for six weeks and you get a paycheck but if that's all you do for the year you're fucked i think finally about you know? year four of working on chelsea lately is when i got the notice again that i'd have to take all these classes or whatever to keep up your real estate license okay and um i finally just and i remember my mom like she did know like this illegal guy's name was pinky and he, <laughs> like, <laughs> it was pinky and he would decide <laughs> a piece of paper that you went to the class or whatever you pay him some money and i was like you know what mom like i actually think i'm gonna let it go yeah i i just think i'm i do think i'm gonna be okay to be working in this business and if i i just right. don't think i want to like go back to real estate and if i do then i really do have to relearn everything anyway so whatever right. i'll just start from scratch but i don't oh. want to keep up and i don't want to keep calling pinky and uh <laughs> I tell this story. I love I, that you were a realtor, though. That is, I did. I mind blowing. I um. I also joined SAG illegally too. You did. I, I remember did. hearing that story. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah there was a, another guy. His name was Wayne. Wayne. He worked huh? at SAG. And I. Oh my. God. Yeah, and um, I turned on a few people to that. And then he would produce, like, the three pieces of work, like uh, Budweiser commercial. You had one, you were hired as an extra, but they gave you right. one line on something. And therefore, you had three pieces of work that you needed to join. Oh, my God. Because, again, like, it was so important that you were part of that. Like, whatever. Right. Um, yeah. So, you know, all the shit we had to do. I always, oh that's why I, pre I preach a lot about how, like. It's so nice that people have other ways to show their creativity to the world through the internet. Like if yeah. you if the agent that you were pursuing blew off that Sunday night cuz he was drinking all day at some West Hollywood party and here exactly. you and you begged the director to give you like more bits than you deserved cuz you had this agent coming right. and you do the whole thing and you come out and they didn't come and you come home to your listen to your voicemail or your answering machine and they're like Hey, uh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to come tonight, but let me know about next week. Right. Oh, heartbreaking. Just, that's where you're like, oh my God, I yeah. want to give up a life. Yeah. Now it's so much easier for people to find you. Yeah. Or, you know, it's so much easier to make yourself seen. Right. And so the people that don't do that and still complain that no one's finding them. It's like, no, you don't really want to do this. Yeah, right. Because it's so easy Yeah. <laughs> right now. You know, you have no excuses. Yeah, compared to, to what we had. Yeah. Oh, so my Vince Vaughn story. Oh, yeah, is Vince me. Vaughn, um, and I, I think it's in a book, but I don't know if I'm told in a while. So I went to the Mondrian, and Cheryl Hines and I used to go there okay. because I figured out how to get in. I would, I had a number, and I'd call, and I'd say... Hi, um, I'm calling from the Ford Modeling Agency, and I have a couple girls in town from New York that would like to come to the Sky Bar. <gasps> the Sky Bar. At the Mondrian okay. Hotel. Uh -huh. And they'd say, okay, what are their names? And so then I would say our names. And, I mean, we weren't Ford models, but I think we were cute enough to be of there. Of course. So then, so that was my place to go. I loved that it was outside. I, like, you know, world of stuff. 
And so that night, all these girls, all these people were like, oh my God, those are the guys from the Swingers movie. And so it was Vince Vaughn and like one of the other guy, one of the other guys. And oh my God, these girls are just talking and talking to him. And I mean, in Vince yes. Vaughn, I was like, oh my God, this tall, hot, hilarious, like so my type. But I never and, went for and like. Swingers ho- was like the hottest the look- shit. Like, like it was like oh. just when people were like, I only see independent films, you yeah. know, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was an independent movie and so hip. And somehow he starts talking to me. And I'm like, he's not gonna be interested in me with all these like hot models everywhere, right? So then um, he. So we go, uh, so I talk to him and we're we flirty, whatever, but now it's time to go. And it's like two in the morning. And he's like, well, where are you going now? And I'm like, nowhere, I'm going home. Yeah. Like I'm going home. And he's like, what are you doing tomorrow? I'm like, oh, I'm actually in this thing called the Groundlings. And he's like, I love the Groundlings. You know, cause he was like very yeah. funny, yeah. like, and very, and so, and I go, oh, well, I have a Sunday show tomorrow, you know? And he's like, okay, I'll come. And I go, you will? And I'm like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. And he's like, I go, okay, I'll I'll put your name on the list or whatever. So I put his name on the list. And I'm like, there's no way this guy's coming. There's just no way. Oh, my God. I don't. I'm so resolved that he's not coming. I'm not even in, in remotely thinking that he will. I do the whole show. And you know how you go backstage like, bef- like before or like the little act break or whatever? Yeah. And Roy Jenkins is back there. Do you remember Roy Jenkins? Oh, he was my teacher for a while. Did he uh-huh. hit on you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> so anyway, he goes, oh, hey, good show. That guy from Swingers is here. Oh, my God. So now I go out and do the improv and I totally bomb. It was not no. good. And he arrived late, so he didn't even see, like, my two funny, like, polished sketches. Damn it. But fine, we come out. He's, yeah. like, so funny. Da, da. He's telling everybody how funny everybody is. And he's like, okay, let's all go to Snake Pit. Buys everybody drinks at Snake Pit. Stop! Yes. Then I get in a car that looked like it was out of Swingers. It was, like, a big boat, 1960-something. Oh, my God. And we start rolling down, like, to, like... Some Silver Lake, Los Feliz joint, just like Swingers, smoking. The Dresden. Drinking something. Yeah. And then he drives you back to my car at the Groundlings. We make out. (gasps) And um, he had this, like, friend with him that was, like, visiting or something. So that was kind of weird that the friend was there. Okay, so then next night is Monday. And... I'm going to go to the Largo and watch all the alternative comics who they would never let me go on. They said, because you perform at the improv and you're a normal stand-up, they don't want you. It's the Janine Garofalo's and Margaret Cho's. And I'm like, whatever. It's such a fun scene. I'm going to go. Yeah. And the guy who runs it, I called to like get my name on so I don't have to pay. And he goes, oh, we're doing this kind of cool thing tonight. There's this um, movie that this, this little short movie that this guy made where he did a parody of Swingers meets Sling Blade. Remember Sling Blade yes. was with Billy Bob Thornton? Yes. And we're airing it tonight at the at the place. So I go, all right. So I call Vince Vaughn and I go, because he had said we'd heard about it. But yeah. it's not like you could pull it up on YouTube. Right. So I go, actually, they're playing it tonight at Largo if you want to go. And uh, But I leave a message. But I'm like, but I'm sure you're busy, whatever. They play the thing. It's so funny. Just as it ends, he shows up. And sits down with and is like all excited to see me. What? And I per, and I wore this mini skirt, and I didn't even shave my legs because I was like, "There's no way he's coming." So it wasn't right. a terrible. It wasn't like you could braid right. it. It just right. wasn't what you would be doing if you knew you were going to see a sure. dude that you wanted to like get down with. Oh my god. So then, um, so then all, everyone that never talked to me before starts coming up to the table. Margaret Cho. Da, 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 da. Hi, Heather. How are you? Oh, my God. So, <laughs> oh, ick. Then we go to, oh. God, I don't think it's still there, but it's something horse and carriage. Horse and carriage on Sunset. It's oh, another yes. gross yeah, dive yeah, yeah. bar. Yeah, yeah. And I even think this is back when you could like smoke at a bar. I'm Everyone sure is smoking. All these girls start coming up, talking to him. Oh, I took an acting class with you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh my god, like just leave my boyfriend alone, you know? Yeah, right. And um, anyway, <laughs> the final end of the story is, he's like, so what do you want to do now? And I'm like, now I live in Brentwood. He yeah. lives in, and he's like, and I go, we can go back to your place. And he's like, 
no, I have the guy staying there. I don't even know. Maybe we don't even have an apartment. Now, I, I go, well, I, I totally shut him down to come back to my apartment because my apartment was so messy with the wigs and the wig caps and the gross costumes from the yes. Sunday night performance that I had never like organized or I never kept them at the theater. I always right. brought them home. So it was just like a mess of yeah. like shit like that. And I was like, I can't see that I'm messy. I'm like, I'm sure we'll go out again. Well, the following weekend was Labor Day week, Memorial Day weekend, and he was in a Jurassic Park movie, and I never heard from him again. <laughs> okay. You've blown my mind. <laughs> and I still called him what, a bunch of times, which is embarrassing. What could have been? And I called him a bunch of times, being like, joking, yeah. making up excuses that I'm going to be in Los Feliz. So my girlfriend's in Los Feliz and we're going out to the th three of clubs. If you're going to be out, leave them a message. I'm oh, like, what a loser. Boy. Never have seen him since. Do you Damn. think you can get him to come on Juicy Scoop? Do you think Listen, there's any chance? I think chance? you just put it out there into the universe. I want to put it out there. Now, I know he's married. Can, I am. I'm happily I married. Do this? I've never spoken to the man in my life. I don't know. Maybe. So I don't know why. I feel I like would... you're bigger in Hollywood. You could find I, him. I don't know that I am. But I believe wow. he's married with a couple kids and lives in Manhattan well, Beach. Don't 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 let that stop you. <laughs> Well, I'm married, with a, I'm married yeah. with a couple kids, too, yeah, so I want to say quietly married if Vince with a couple Vaughn's kids. wife yeah. is a juicy scooper, I yeah. absolutely am not into getting your man or ruining your marriage. Right. Let's not destroy each other's lives. No. I just would like to talk to him about this Let's night. Let's talk. We'll talk comedy. We'll talk yes. you know, the 90s. We'll talk exactly. things that are awesome. What a delight what you he's, were. What he's watching. Paid for everything. Yeah. Was nice to everybody. Total delight. Oh. I have no, nothing bad to say, except that I should have put away my wigs and I should have said, let's go back to Brentwood. No, you shouldn't have put your wigs away because that is who you were, okay? <laughs> and no, you were not going to keep them in your cubby hole at the Groundlings because there were rats there. I never even knew okay? that you could keep things there. Until oh, yeah. like by the final for... year, I know I was like, "Oh, you can." I was always yeah. just putting the back seat or my car. That I just had so much shit in that Celica. I did too. I never. <laughs> I for the longest time, I didn't know they had cubbies back there. Could use. <laughs> but I, I also knew there were rats. Like oh. it was a problem. It was an ongoing problem. So I was like, "You know what? I'm just gonna keep all my stuff right. to myself." And that way, no one's going to just borrow it and never give it back or any of that stuff. I paid a lot of money for those. With My husband worked two jobs now, I to see, put me I've through the ground. Now, I've seen you and the husband at a few red carpet Hollywood events. Yes. Have you enjoyed being a Hollywood star? Have you had some good parties? Have you gone to the Jane Lynch real game nights, not the ones that they just <laughs> cast you on? Um. Well, you know, I used to work with Jane Lynch on a show on oh, yeah, that we... Love Spring International. Oh, show. she was on that too. She yeah. was on that, and um, and so yes, I have, I had been to her house before. Again, yeah. someone that I, I run into now and again, but yeah. we're not like close or anything. But I do love her. And yeah, she's amazing. she's amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't love going to those things. To it's those, it makes you nervous. Um, what it makes me. Well, I don't like dragging my husband to things because okay. he gets shoved out of the way. Because or, he's not in the business. Yeah, he's not in the business. He doesn't know what to do on a red carpet. And people yeah. actively say, move, move. Yeah. And I don't like him being treated like that. Oh, well, that's that, nice That bugs you. me. It um, doesn't bother me when they say that to Peter. Oh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, but he sort of knows it, but it's yeah. the same thing. In the beginning, they're sort of excited. Yeah. And then they're kind of like, you could take a girlfriend. Yeah. Like, I'm fine. Like, I, yeah. I could go stand around somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. You know, and not have to dress like this. Right. <laughs> um, so I usually end up taking my manager to things. Yeah. And, you know, there are some events that are kind of fun, like the um, women in television yeah. stuff. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, the New York events, I like more than the stuff that goes on out here. Oh, you like to fly out there and have like a whole little fun. Well, weekend. if I'm out there anyway, yeah, doing press for something. Why do you Why like, do you like the New York events more? Um, because you run into different people. Yeah, 
And it's just a different vibe out there right. anyway. Yeah. But I don't love going to parties and stuff. Yeah. You know, I like to roll in, do one round, and then leave. Yes. Aren't you so happy when you get in the car? Yes, I am. Everybody <laughs> with their plate of tiny foods. Yes. I mean, I don't want to sound ungrateful or anything. No, but it but is it, hard to hold your purse and have a little food and a drink and right. talk to people. And I'm and I do like to eat at those things. I'm like the only person that eats. Yeah. And I'm like, a lot of people will just go eat after. I'm like, why Heather, why do you have to keep getting a bite of everything? <laughs> Like, why don't you just fucking, like, you can afford a meal well, they after. bought it. I know, Someone but I paid for it. It's still you're hard just for me to, to be waste. like. Of course no, you're going to eat it. It is hard for me to, to say that to myself. Heather, yeah. you can get any meal you want on the way home. Yeah. Because I'm still of the mindset, like, free fucking food. Let's get at it. And sometimes it's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's always you know? good. But I'm always shocked when people aren't eating it. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's probably the wiser thing to do or not to have an abundance of it. Right. Yeah. But I feel like at these events, like we all know why we're there. Okay? Why are we there? You know, like, why? oh, because it's the upfront. And oh, okay. We're using yeah. advertisers. Right. We're, you know, we know we're supposed to have you been... dress up and go to these things, but it's not fun. Have you, you been know? nominated for an Emmy? No. Oh, you haven't? I've been nominated for... What about a People's Choice? A Critic's Choice. Oh, for? For Goldberg. Oh, that's awesome. Did you um, get it? No, no. Had you written your speech? No. You didn't even bother to write a speech? <laughs> no. <sighs> um, yeah. Have so you thought about your speech when you do get nominated? Um... Do you feel like it's a campaigning thing? It is a campaigning thing. First of all, it would thing. suck if you were nominated this year. So I'm glad you weren't. <laughs> so it is I a would like to be nominated and that is weird next also. year. Should we get the I, juicy scoopers behind it? Listen. <laughs> do you, I don't know. What kind of command do you have over the juicy scoopers? I mean, do you I, feel like you could uh... I think that I could I could work <laughs> something up like yeah, if you let me know just a few, you know, like okay. what they do I need to get Pinky involved? <laughs> <laughs> or Wayne from SAG. Or Wayne from SAG, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wait, let's talk about the Goldbergs mm -hmm. a little bit before you go. Um, it's such a great show. Oh. And I love that Adam Goldberg, it's based on his family and everything. Yeah. And so how did this come to you? So there was a show on the air called Rules of Engagement. Yeah, I remember that. And I got brought in for one episode, but then it turned into like 14 episodes. Uh -huh. And that is the same production company that did, that's doing the Goldbergs, which is Happy Madison. Which is, yeah. So. Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. Yeah. yeah. So um, they just came to me and said, hey, we have something. Please read it. And I read the script. It was funny. But when I saw the footage of the family, because they sent the me real like a sizzle. Right. I was like, of his That's real family. It. I don't want to read anything else. This is it. This is this is the pilot I want to do because I had a couple other choices. A couple other choices, and it was like nothing lit me up like the footage of his mother. Yeah, the real mother. Yeah, I said that I can do that. I want this, and obviously, it was the right decision. It's the best job I've ever. Had. So, did you have to test for it, or did they give it to you? They just gave it. They gave it to me. And so how did you guys like decide on the wig and everything? Oh, that was an ongoing headache. His mom had really kinky, curly 80s hair. Very yeah. frosted. Yeah. And it was very poofy. I had a hairstylist in the beginning that was like, her version of poofy was very yeah. omnipresent. As you can see, well, I don't know how... Closely, you follow the show, but yeah, it's there's been a different yeah. incarnations of the hair yeah. with different hairstylists. Right. Which it should if it's Which, many years yeah, going with, by. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but back in the beginning, there it seemed like my hair was changing mid-scene. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> because we do reshoots. We did right. a lot of reshoots in the beginning. Um, but I will say this. I love the actual Beverly. So you've hung out. Oh, yes. And she's active on Twitter. Yeah. 
um, she has a lot to say, and she would come <laughs> and our birthdays are very close to each oh, other. Oh, that's kind of crazy. So she would come into town. She's, so you're the same sign. We're the same sign. Oh my God, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. And she would come into town and visit us on set, and she would always bring like mass baked goods that she would bake in Pennsylvania or Florida, wherever she's staying, and bring in her suitcase <laughs> for us. Okay. And I am telling you, she makes a banana bread that is so stupidly good, it'll bring tears to your eyes. Oh, my God. I can imagine. Yeah. But she is, we have toned her down a lot, if that tells you You mean anything. your character? Yes. Oh, you're toning yeah. from the real woman. Yes. <laughs> and even she will say that. Oh, my God. Hilarious. So that's why it's... I mean, one of the what a gift for me. I mean, I, I feel like as a mother, if th 20, 30 years from now, Brandon or Drake or McKinsey actually created a TV show about our life back then, mm -hmm. I, I just don't think there could be anything better on earth. How, how I, flattered would you be? Beyond. Yeah. I mean, I tried to sell a show myself about myself over the years. The first one, I was 30, and I'm a young girl working with parents in real estate. The other one was like eight years ago, and it was kind of my life as a comic with, right. a, you know, the husband and the kids and da-da-da. And I always thought I would be the mom in a sitcom. Right. And now as time goes on, I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'll be a hot step-grandmother. Maybe I'll be a grandmother. But maybe I should just have the goal that my kids become Adam Goldberg. I mean, let them, you know, let them give you that gift. I mean, You've done enough God. for them, haven't you? I mean, I think about my fa <laughs> the favorite episode ever, mm -hmm. by far, for our family, okay. was you guys go out to dinner. Yes. Is that like a known classic? You go out to dinner and it's, you don't order fish at a barbecue place yes. and all of that and then the the, the the waitress coming over thinking it's your food yeah and that actually happened yeah because then you see Where the they video go and, like poke yeah. the the steaks and stuff yeah i mean that is so I mean, there's so many funny things they I, are a gift that keeps giving because they're still out there living their lives they're, so they're still, both the dad and mom are married. Um, uh, the dad has passed on. Okay. And he did not work at a furniture store. Okay. He was an anesthesiologist. Okay, right. Um, but that's not a big deal. But yeah, yeah. no, that's not those a big are those deal. Things and that then TV there wasn't an to... Erica, there was an Eric who oh, did not want to be featured on the show. Oh, really? Yeah. I think now he has kind of come around and we've interviewed him on the show. Right. So it was three boys. It was three boys. Which even makes more sense of the kind of mother she is. Oh, yeah. Like a mom, a, a mom only boy, a boy mom, which I love, too, is that your yeah. your bridesmaid's character was a boy only mom. Like, it's so funny. Yeah. And then and you're not a mother no, in real life. Uh -uh. So this has kind of been almost like I think sort of like Tracy Ellis Ross, like she gets to be a mom 100%. in this fun way uh -huh. and get to experience like all this stuff. That must be so cool. It's it is so cool. And it made me appreciate my mom so much. Yeah. Because, again, our show takes place in the 80s and I grew up in the 80s. Yeah. And I understand what my mom went through now having yeah. kids that were growing up and you know how sometimes I would catch her crying yes and I would say mom why are you upset because of you <laughs> oh <laughs> but what she meant was you know you're growing up and pulling away from me yeah is what she meant and look I don't know that I would be any different if I had kids yeah and I found out there was something going on at school with some little brat. Right. You know I would go down and hide in the bushes and have a conversation. Like, I, I would be bananas. Right. You know, I don't know if you've ever had to do that, like, get involved. Oh, yeah. No, I've called. Yeah. I remember I, I had a moment um, where they someone said, it got back to me that my son was very upset because um, they did the picking of the teams and this happened in PE. And I had a meeting with the with the principal and the um coach and I was like how the hell 
in 2000 and whatever it was, 17, are you still letting students pick teams? And I'm like, this is a thing. I go, I because I put it on Facebook, this is my worst memory because I yeah. wasn't athletic. The onslaught it got, and I was like, would you make every child get up on stage and sing a song? To an unathletic person, that is as traumatic for someone right. who's not a singer to have to go do that. Right. And I go, but you wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And I like, you know, and they were like, oh, my God. And they were so sorry. And they said it was just because we were short a person and the coach had to leave or something. And that was, and you know, yeah. Peter's like, oh, my God, like, what are you doing? And that was real. And I don't, I'm usually not that mom. But right. that was the one time that, because it hit home to me. Yeah. Like, I was the last picked on the team. I don't even, and I remember my, my best friend would be like, Okay, I'm team captain. I'm not going to let you be picked last, but I am going to pick like three of the really good people first, but you won't be embarrassingly last this okay. time. I'm like, okay, so that was a good day. That's a good friend. But to think that I had to go through that, and that's why with this pandemic and stuff, I'm like, you know what? Maybe kids missing a year or two of middle school isn't so fucking bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what are they really missing? I think missing? it's okay. Yeah. They're going to be yeah. okay. Like, nobody benefits from that like it does not make you a better person it doesn't make you a stronger person no. none of that stuff so like i love that you feel that way and like so yeah. and, that, and that is just and of course sometimes with people when they do a real show even they're like let's have a girl too because it adds all those extra storylines right. about a girl so i think yes. that was a smart choice that they made her a girl yeah and uh you know it really has been fun having yeah. a girl in the mix because you know of course barry's friends always want to spy on the girl and yeah like, yeah you know there's just all kinds of fun things yeah. that um that we've gotten to do but i'm i'm telling you like i never ever take this for granted yeah like it really is the best job i've ever had the best people i've ever worked with down to every pa on the set like i love this job and so when we had to shut down right it was, I mean, we knew we were coming back, but it hurt so much because we couldn't say goodbye properly for this season. Yeah. And then we were all so thrilled to be back up and running, but I can't hug anybody. Right. How do you, know? you do it with COVID? It's interesting. It takes, it takes a lot longer. Yeah. And it's, um, it would seem on the outside like overkill, but... In the six weeks we've been up, we've had no positive cases. That's great. So that's amazing. And you want to um, be that great example so that other places go, okay, they can do it. Yeah. You know, we can do it too. So, yeah. You, yeah. If you want to get back up and running, yeah, just do it. Just do all, take all the little yeah. necessary steps. And that, and, and that is, what, do they test you like every couple days? Yeah, or? we okay. get tested every couple days. Everybody that, that works. Yeah. Um, the crew, they have to get their temperature taken three times a day. When we are on set, it's a very bare bones crew. It's just like the camera department and some sound people. Right. When it's time to change the lights, we leave. The rest of the crew comes in. They finish what they're doing. And when every last person is off, then we come back on. You know, everybody wears a mask and a visor. Yeah. When they're around us. Um, it's been a hair and makeup disaster. <laughs> There's going to be some interesting continuity. Yeah. Lack of continuity um, this season. But it'll also be fun to see if the audience can pick out who's actually a dummy in the background. Because we oh, can't yeah. have tons of, you know, background now. Oh, my God. That's yeah. right. So we um, we use crew members. Yeah. When we need to. And we try to have like a base group of extras that maybe they're all from the same family and they've all been quarantining together. Oh, okay. so, you know, it's it's working. creative. And you have to get real creative with real it. Real creative. And yeah. um, we, uh, you know, a lot of plexiglass dividers. Yeah. Wow. And we have a, a woman who's in charge of it all who's like a beast. You, the, co the COVID the police. The COVID nurse, yeah. yeah. If she sees that your mask is slipping, she'll uh, let you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Good. So it's, but it's pretty amazing. And I mean, 
I always try to get the dirt from the guy that gives me my COVID test. And he told me that a production in New York shut down because they had 21 positive cases. Wow. Like, wow. Right. Hmm. Well, it just okay. goes to well, show that there if you go. one person has it. Yeah. You know, that's how you get it. And if nobody yeah. has it, then you can't, you know, then, then you great. can be okay. Yeah. But like, do you want to be responsible for everything shutting down? Hell no, you don't. Yeah. No. So. Yeah, yeah it's good. Well, it's good to know that people have figured out some ways to get back. Yeah. I love you. Thank you for coming, Wendy. What? Get your. We are going to get you on the Goldbergs. Get me on. If, I'd love. If it's to, the last thing I do, I can be your friend. We're do I it. anything. I'd yeah. love it. Yeah. Yeah, you know I'd love. I'd love to be like the mom of one of these guys' girlfriends, yes. and then you don't like me. Oh That's what God. we should do. Oh Something like that. Okay. Tell them that's okay. a good storyline if they haven't already done it. Have they done that something similar? Um, we can have a new we one. We did meet someone's mother this season. Or maybe they um, love and each it, other. And it was played by the girl okay. who was the actual girl. Oh. Like, so. well, or maybe they love each other and it's like then they break up because they're like, we can't have two of these together. Um, like, like, I can't, we can't. That could maybe, be funny Or maybe too. like the hot professor at the school the, at the college that the older kids are going to? I'm the hot professor? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Well, sure. What? I don't know. I Heather, can't, I, I, I have don't... you met yourself, <laughs> m'lady? <laughs> I'm just thinking of all Please. the outfits. I'm thinking of kind of the ugly outfits. Well, you but know. But some of them could be cute outfits. Yeah, yeah. I love you. I um, love you. You're on social media. Can people yes. follow you? Yes. I'm on, well, you can follow me on Twitter, but I don't do much there. Yeah. At Wendy McClendon Co. On Instagram, um, Wendy McClendon Covey. Uh, have a podcast called Generation Ripe, which hopefully you oh, will come yeah, and Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, and... Uh, I don't really do Facebook anymore, but okay. that's, yeah. I think you're so okay. You'll I find think you're me. fine. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> of course, watch the Goldbergs. Yes. Thanks, you guys. And Quibi. Reno 911 on Quibi. Yes. 